Congratulations with the Abel Prize. Thank you very much. Yes. What does the Abel Prize mean to you personally? That so many people will know about me who did not know anything about me before. <laughs> did you wish for this prize? Well, certainly I think everybody wishes. So how did you react when you actually got the phone? Because you got the phone call five o'clock in the morning. Yeah, so I jumped into the sailing. I heard that you were already up. Yeah, were you yeah. going for a walk or something? No, just was such exciting news. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, chaos. That's... In our daily lives, it's a phenomenon that we all know very well. But no, I, just, I don't agree with you. I think you know in every day life, what does it mean? Disorder. Disorder. But there is a big difference between disorder and chaos. What's the difference? Uh, for example, there can be the institute of chaos, but there cannot be the institute of disorder. I see. What is it about chaos that has been attracting you so much? Uh, well, the variety of its form in various systems. You look at something, it looks so much ordered, but if you look better, then you see that it's really very chaotic. And the other way around, I suppose. The other way around is not so often. <laughs> really? Mm. Why have you chosen this part of mathematics as your part? Uh, first of all, it is not still a part of mathematics, it's just some theory. Second, just I started to work in this field much before the word chaos was invented. So we were simply doing ergodic theory of the theory of dynamical system and then came physicists with the word chaos. And it turned out that we are working on the theory of chaos which we did not know for many years. Right. After that there was no other choice as they say that every our theorem is a theorem about chaos. How did it all start for you? You were born in 1935 in Moscow. Yeah, that's completely, absolutely true. <laughs> in a Jewish family. It's, this is Influential also true. family, it's both in science and in culture. Well, you can say so, yes. How did you discover your own talent? Were you a little child when you were starting on mathematics? Uh, this is just very subtle issue. I even... I'm not so much sure about my talent even until now. <laughs> because, well, I participated in many Olympiads and I never won a prize. Just, I was not always with the grade, with the marks. So just, uh, so just uh, we did not have the idea that our science requires some special knowledge, some special talent until just this field became rather popular. But as a child, were you attracted to mathematics? Did you like doing it when you were No, were so absolutely not. <laughs> I liked very much play volleyball, play chess and other things, but no, no, no mathematics at all. So when did you actually start doing it? After I graduated from the high school, I had to choose something to do. And then after some discussion with uh, people in my family, I decided that maybe the best way will be to uh, do mathematics. But n not before. For a practical reason then? Uh, no, just it was because of environment. So my grandfather uh, was mathematician. My half-brother was, in, in a sense, mathematician. So the influence was very strong. And I was too weak to just fight with this. Your grandfather, did he actually teach you mathematics? No, unfortunately, he was rather old. Uh, 
he tried it a couple of times without any uh, reasonable success. So just but you looked up to him? Oh, yeah, certainly every day. <laughs> so when you work at, at your level of mathematics, how do you go about to solve a complicated mathematical problem? How do you work? Or just it's again very difficult question. Usually, the solution takes several years. So if you just consider my age and assume that I need two years for each the theorem, then you can calculate how many theorems did I have. Two years. One problem takes yeah, average two of two years. Yeah, two years. Yeah, some beginning with the 20 to 80, so 60, so something like 15 theorems. It's a lot, by the way. It is. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you go about then for those two years? You make a lot of notes and spreading them all over the floor, or what do you do? Mm. It depends on the problem. In some cases, I thought about each problem 24 hours a day, sometimes less, but in all cases, it just took a lot of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. You mean this literally? You, tr you think about it all the time? Yes. Doing everything else, you think about mathematics? Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a lack of presence in your life then, or is it like... No, I don't understand. What do you mean? I mean, your wife, she's a mathematician. She, she yeah. probably knows when you go like, you're not present. Mm, I'm not so much sure. Just she just talks to me independently w on whether I'm working or not. But when you think about mathematics all the time, yeah, is it all in your head? Where else can it be? <laughs> Writing it down. No, this is just the final stage. When it's time to write something down, then it means that the problem is solved and just it's okay. the least interesting part. So it's actually all in your head until you've solved it? Yes. Is this an exhausting process? Oh, very much, yes. So how do you feel in the end when you actually solved something? Uh, well, that is just... I don't like this question because usually at the end I don't have enough energy to write everything well enough. So try to write it as quickly as possible and to forget about this. So sometimes you need help to write it down then? Mm, well, I have many just drawing papers but it doesn't mean that I needed help. Just we discussed with several people just uh, the problems, their solutions, but we helped to um, to each other somehow. I have heard that you actually never give in on something. You just go on and on, bureaucracy or problems or things stopping you. You just. Well, I'm very glad that people say so. <laughs> but do you agree? Is this a method? It's certainly a method, but I'm not so much sure that I use it all the time. Okay. But have you actually given in on something that you've been working with and I oh, can't solve yes, it? Oh, yes, yeah. Many times there are many problems which I could not solve. Okay. And you put them aside and you don't think yeah. about them anymore? That's it's different. U usually I don't think because just I have no ideas. So what do you need? What skills do you need to be a mathematician at a top level, in your opinion? Uh, I think some intuition is needed, some mathematical technique is needed, some knowledge is also useful, <laughs> but not more. <laughs> What have been your happiest moments? Uh, happiest moments certainly were not connected with mathematics. Okay. <laughs> if you should, if you should talk about your career then in mathematics, your happiest moments would that be when you actually solve something, or is it 
working on something or finding a problem to work with? Well, that uh, may be the happiest moment when I can give uh, the first talk on this. Then, uh, when I give this talk, I start to understand even better what I want to say. Is this connected to teaching, when you say talk on this? Uh, well, it's not. teaching is more or less routine, but when you just discuss your paper, it's something which you want to explain to people in such a way that they should understand it. So when you actually, um, when, you, when you put it into language and talk about it, then you increase your own understanding of what's yes. going on. Mm -hmm. So you talk a lot then? Mm, in a sense, yes, under any occasion. You've also had a lot of students. Yes. Like 50 PhD students. I think 70, but it does not matter. How, how do you find teaching? You like, you like teaching? No, I just, I think that it's because students like mathematics, which I'm doing. But I never push them and I never just give him, them some advice. They do everything by themselves. Yes, I, my role is to tell them what is, in my opinion, interesting, perspective, promising, not more. I've heard that you give one advice. You say, do what you like. <coughs> yeah, but it's just, in, just it's in life. It's not only in mathematics. But is that, should that be a driving force? I mean, doing what you like rather yeah. than what's... Sensible what, or what is needed, yeah. Yeah, uh, what is needed. Mm -hmm. You've also had some female students. Yes. There aren't many women at the top level of mathematics. Why do you think it's like that? No, first of all, some of my female students just became mathematicians of a very high level. Marina Ratner is here. She is one of them. <laughs> But I, uh, she, I am quite sure that she does not like to be mentioned on, on this occasion. But just <coughs> so my experience shows that there is a crucial difference <coughs> between stu boy students, boys and students, girls. What is the difference? Yeah, if you give a problem to a, a boy then he is quite sure that he solved it in the coming months or two months. He's month. confident. And then he, it, he is very much surprised if he cannot solve it. When you give a problem to a girl, then she is completely sure that she will never solve it. And she is surprised if sometimes she solves. This is a very crucial difference. Which one are the best students then? What's the best attitude to have? The all students are just very good, great, and I, I like all of them. But th do you think that women have a kind of disadvantage then in mathematics because they don't have the self-confidence to actually throw themselves into difficult questions and problems? No, I don't think so. Just a woman can be as gifted mathematician as men. For example, I have very good uh, students, Karina Ulchigray, she is a professor of Bristol now. When she graduated from Princeton University, she had something like 15 offers because of her works. So it is much better than many men. You talked about in your speak, you talked about Kolmogorov. Yes. And he's seen upon as a legend. Yeah, in mathematics, is, yeah, and you knew him, and you worked with him. Yes. Describe him. What was he like? <coughs> well, first of all, Komagorov was a very unexpected person. So he could say something which you never heard of, did not expect, and only much later you understand what did he say. 
And this is the reason why he had so many students. He talked to people around him, formulated them problems, gave him something, and they just were working on this for a long time before he, the, he, he could do something. On the other hand, there were just cases when Komagorov was writing papers of his students because he wanted to show to them what is the best way, best style to write the paper. And uh, then, uh, uh, then just sometimes it was just, especially when Komagoro was working on something, then it was impossible to touch him. He was in such huge tension that it, it, it impossible to be just even around him. It sounds difficult. There was just there was some just some tension around him, so that you could not ask him about anything. Even sometimes he forgot about eating, drinking during this time. Just he was working very, very intensely. So what would happen if you actually interrupted him when he was like that? Oh, would he, he will be, be angry very. Or? He will be very angry. He can make a great scandal. Really? Yeah. Did you do this? Did you interrupt him? Uh, no, certainly not. <laughs> I think nobody did. Almost nobody did this. So y you were a bit afraid of him then? Mm -hmm. No, it's not afraid. Just I did not want to make him something bad. But actually you worked with him. Uh, I ha we had just one joint publication, but we had many contacts certainly. What does he meant to you? No, we, he was the source of many problems which determined my uh, direction in mathematics. But sometimes he was, uh, his reaction was very unexpected. For example, I brought him one of my papers and he just told me, I don't understand why you were doing this. You are a grown-up person. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That he considered it's what not very encouraging, really. Yeah, no, just he considered my result as something not enough serious. So what so did you do? Uh, nothing. I published it. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. Mm -hmm. With the Abel Prize comes one million dollars. Have yeah. you decided what to do with the money? Well, just many people ask me this question and my answer always is the following. Thank you for asking me about this question. I understand that you are an expert about this and when I start thinking, I shall ask for your advice. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I am not so much sure that at this point.